Hi, I'm Tony Russo, and this is Funeral Service Insider, the podcast from Kate Spoilston. Each episode features conversations about emerging trends and news that affect the death care industry. We talk to people who understand the delicate balance of change in a profession and vocation steeped in tradition. This week, I'm speaking with Taylor Johnson of Interra Green Burial by Mueller Memorial. Taylor is not a funeral director, but she grew up in funeral service. It's a family business. And we talk about her experience growing up and some of the changes that have occurred during her lifetime in funeral service and how she and some members of Mueller Memorial Funerals and Cremation decided to make a bigger effort when it came to offering green burial. You'll hear all about how they did it in the episode, but what I'd like you to think about is how funeral directory her approach is. She really is committed to making sure that people can have the funeral that they want, not the funeral that Mueller Memorial Funerals and Cremation happens to be able to provide. And it's it's a key difference And it's an important one, attitudinally, I guess. As always, please stick around for the postmortem after the credits, where I'm going to share a story, I think, from this month's American Funeral Director magazine that is fun and worth looking up. And by the time you hear this, you'll be able to read it. Okay, that's enough of me. Um, Let's talk to Taylor. So... When um when when we spoke first, I had thought that you didn't have any any experience in the funeral business, but before you got this job, but you you told me otherwise. So can you tell me first of all how you got into the funeral business, and second of all your background in the funeral business before you got into it? Sure. Um, I am I suppose a third generation family in the the funeral profession. Um, my Step grandfather started Mueller Memorial uh, in 1946, and yep. So his son took over the business in 1988, and that is my stepfather. So I was raised around the funeral home. He became my stepdad when I was 15, and and came into our life when 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 I was 13. So, and actually, my biological father, my dad was buried at the very funeral home I work at now, or was, was his visitation was here and he was buried through Mueller Memorial. So, so I have a lot of connection to, to the the funeral profession and, and have a lot of knowledge about the funeral business and, and from both sides, from being in it and also from experiencing it at a young age. So I, my career brought me into healthcare. I worked in the dental field and then I, I had a an injury that pulled me out of that and I was looking for something else to do. And and I was I had just um, I was just about to complete a degree in English from from a university and I was looking for something in the copywriting sort of realm and Scott, my stepdad, said, um, well, I think I've got something that you could do. And that turned from a part-time thing into more and more and more. And that was almost 11 years ago. So I've been here working for 11 years and now I've, I'm, I'm definitely part of the team here and, and doing a lot of things uh, as needed. And well, I was going to ask you about this anyway. So can you tell me about the writing aspect of your job still? Sure. So the major undertaking that I just completed was writing all of the content on our Intera Green Burial website. It is, it's a very, very informative, very robust website. So there was a ton of research. And I, I told Scott, I was like, I think I probably have about 100 hours into this because <laughs> it was about researching what's what's legal here, about options, about um, actually what happens with all of the the disposition methods that we offer and and really making sure that this is not a form of greenwashing and that we're really holding ourselves to this high standard and and you know walking what we're saying and so that's that's reflected in our website and the depth of content that's there also having that much content gives you better search results right if if people find that it's useful they'll stay if people stay then it improves your your findability. And that's important when you've got this 
new project. I guess. Absolutely. From uh, and, and we actually um, hired a consultant because we had a, a like a GoDaddy website that was just scratching the surface and showing people that we were here and that Green Burial was available here in Minnesota. And we knew that when we went into a more permanent place with our website, we wanted it to be as as you know optimized as possible so people can find us. That's the the key. Is like if you, if your SEO is good and you're providing good and valuable and correct content that on your website, then um, the the algorithms will find that and guide people to you because we want we want people to be able to find us. So we actually did consult with a search engine optimization organization and uh, they helped sort of guide where we were going, but I wrote all the content. That is super cool. So let's now go back in time and why did you write all the content? What was what was the conversation when Mueller decided that they wanted to do something a little bit more innovative in the or get into the green burial space? in a way that was, I guess, uncommon. I haven't, I've seen one now that I've been looking, but I haven't seen many people that did it the way your company did. So can you talk about the decision to um, do Intera and how you decided to split it up? You bet. Um, well, there's the the historical side of it, and then there's the sort of mission side of it. The historical right. side of it is one of our funeral directors, Mary, is uh, very ecologically conscious we thought about this and talked about it in a team meeting about um, about I don't really remember exactly what brought it up, but we started talking about green burial. That was our our, our first steps into the space, and Mary was really passionate about this, and and everybody got on board very quickly about giving people another option, something that was as natural as death is. This kind of created a, a groundswell of interest in, and I would say passion for this because it really is this continuation of the natural process of life and death and just returning to the earth with, with as little impact environmentally as possible the way that nature intended it. So we all started rallying around this idea and, and started providing green burial. So our, our first steps were like, okay, well, maybe we just, and we really realized that people searching for us or searching for these services maybe have a, a disposition against funeral homes. And, you know, we've been a funeral home since 1946, and we've been participating in embalming and vaults and caskets. And it can seem like we're just doing this to, you know, to, to, put a face on it and pretend like we're doing something. But so what we wanted to do is make these options available to either the people we serve at Mueller Memorial or the people we serve through Interra Green Burial, but to give people a storefront that speaks to exactly what they're looking for, because we are hoping more and more that people will be looking for natural options and that we can deliver exactly what they're looking for without them getting lost in other services that we offer. And if I can just turn you a little bit there, one of the other things that I've heard from other funeral directors, and as I've been just covering the green burial movement in general, is that there's this concern about how do you add green burial in as an additional like option once people are in the arrangement room. It, it seemed like one more thing that they had to kind of throw on top. And that has been a deterrent for, for, for many, um, or at mm -hmm. least that that's a problem that's been difficult to solve. And by just saying, well, yeah, we do green burial, you see right on the, on the, on the web search, that seems to cut that problem out completely. Right. Exactly. It, it creates clarity for the people who are looking for services because to your point, we all know that, that anyone in the profession knows that once you're in the, the arrangement room, there are so many decisions that have to be made that you don't really want to bog down people with, well, you could do this or this or this. And if, if you're delivering, you know, five different disposition options, um, that can feel a little overwhelming. And so usually the way people find us is first through, uh, not not every person, a lot of the people that we serve are people that we've served in the past, but 
people who find us for Intera are people who are searching specifically for green burial. And we just wanted to create a clear inroad for that so that by the time they call us, it's we can have a more direct and and a conversation that's more in line with what they're looking for right off the bat. So we don't have to kind of wade through, well, you could do this, you could do that. But if someone calls Mueller Memorial and and has a conversation and we kind of discover through talking out about whether or not they want burial or cremation, if they sort of start talking about a way that they're maybe trying to reduce their impact, we can say, well, we can do this. And so we never want to create limits on people's choices. So right. if you come calling calling for Mueller Memorial, if you come calling for Intera, we will meet you wherever you are with whatever service you need. But having this separate service is a, a grander invitation to people who are specifically looking for it. Right. And it's, it's, it makes it easier to communicate um, communicate our position to an audience, you know, for people who are looking for this, it's easier to find it if if everything we're talking about and everything within this service is about um, reducing ecological impact, then it's it's easier to seek out. So the the decision part to the let's do this was was made, but the how do we do this seems like it took a little bit longer. So what was your process of deciding? Because I mean, I I. The website, the link to the website will be in the show notes, but it really is an impressive website that I guess there's also the Green Burial Council, but you guys have a lot of the information that people would need right there. So what was that research process like? What was your um, what was your process like getting certified by the Green Burial Council? Yeah, uh, well, to come back to the first part of that question was uh, how we got started was really we have a very great relationship with um Catholic cemeteries here in Minnesota and um, Resurrection Cemetery um, in Mendota Heights has an entirely green space. So we really the key to getting into green burial is having the ability to provide it at a cemetery. <laughs> like you have to you have to have partnerships with the cemetery and the availability of green cemeteries. Uh, Joan Gasick really headed up this this project with Catholic cemeteries and at Resurrection Cemetery and has uh, big plots of land that are dedicated exclusively to green burial. So once we had that route um, and we knew we could offer this and, and there was a process for it, it made it easier for us to seek out certification, seek out other uh, cemeteries like uh, Mound Cemetery in Brooklyn Park and then Roselawn Cemetery in Roseville, Minnesota has been a great partner as well. Um, and so once we found some options, we really thought, okay, we, we can do this. We can, we can provide green burial in a way that we're comfortable with, that we feel um, we, we've got the experience to be able to guide families through. And so then we, we sought out um, certification through the Green Burial Council, and that was it was it was a good process. It was extensive. Um, they they really do want to make sure that you're representing um, Green Burial on your main website. So if you go to Mueller Memorial's website, it's on there, and they want to make sure it's included in your GPL. They want to make sure that that you are really genuinely providing the services that that you say you are. Oh, and along those lines. Um... You also have to go out and find green um, caskets or wicker caskets or the merchandise. The, there, there is a merchandise aspect to to moving into green funeral business. It's not just it's not just a question of finding the funeral homes. Right. I'm sorry, finding the cemeteries. So, what was that process like? Um, that was was not not too difficult because we are we are a, a funeral home that sends. Um, members of our, our team to conferences, things like that. And if you go to NFDA, if you go to ICCFA, they, um, they have like passages as present there and passages is a, uh, green burial certified provider of, of caskets and shrouds. So, um, that, that made that pretty, pretty streamlined. We were, we were able to access the, um, completely biodegradable, all natural uh, carriers and shrouds through, through mostly through passages. All right. We're going to take a second to speak with Lucia Igani, our director of marketing 
And she's going to tell us about an upcoming in-person event called the Funeral Service Business Plan. Yes, Tony, we're very happy to be back in person. The dates are October 24th and 25th, and it's in Virginia Beach at the Delta Hotels by Marriott. Beautiful location right on the beach. It's a two-day event. We have a panel of nine expert speakers, and it's going to be two days full of learning and networking. And um, we're offering a promo code. This is the first time we're doing this. I'm pretty excited about it. I feel like a podcasting hotshot. But we are offering a promo code for listeners only. It is the lowest price that you will be able to get for the show. And what is the price and what is the promo code? That is correct. So right now we're running a super early bird rate of $347. But for our listeners, we're offering the promo code with another $50 savings, bringing the ticket price to $297. And the promo code for that is FSI Podcast. That is FSI Podcast, like Funeral Service Insider Podcast. FSI Podcast. Put that in a checkout and you'll get the additional $50 off the already reduced early bird rate and that's available till august august 27th august 27th and that the link will be in the show notes and can you tell me about some of the speakers who are who are two speakers that you're excited to hear and why we have tyler anderson he's the vice president of business development for Procoa. his session is titled unlocking pre-need how to leverage pre-need to increase case volume and average funeral value And Chris Kruger is also going to be presenting a session. He's from the Foresight Companies. He's the chief executive officer and his sessions titled, If Not Now, When? The Truth About Business Succession. So we're covering a bunch of different topics with our nine speakers during the two day event. Very cool. And then let me again, follow up with the uh, fair $50 off. Don't forget to use the, the code FSI podcast. And I guess that's all we have for this week. Thank you so much, Lucia. Thanks, Tony. Once once you were up and ready to go, what was what was the promotion aspect of it like? You know, did you did you do a big a big PR push to say now we're offering this or was it something that you let people just find something in the middle of that? Um not really. We kind of eased into it. We we just We didn't know exactly, you know, uh, when you do any kind of marketing in the funeral profession at all, it's a delicate, it's a delicate thing because, you know, it's always the struggle to not seem predatory, to not seem like, you know, you're trying to take advantage of people or something like that. Because so many people have such a bad, um, just knee jerk reaction to funeral professionals. And we wanted to make sure we did this right. And we did it well and thoughtfully, which led us to going down, down an avenue of, of towards education and towards awareness. We aren't trying necessarily, I mean, we're here if somebody needs something from us, but we're not all about just like sales, sales, sales. We're, we're, we're trying to help people just discover that there are other options, that it's not just burial and cremation. You know, our, our cremation rate here is about 60%. And, and as I've said to other people, it's, it's, it's not because people are really excited about cremation. It's just the only alternative they've been offered. So what we tried to do is create a place where uh, online, um, where people can get educated and it also involved us getting uh, um, certified by sustainable still water. And we went to their, um, their first ever climate fair this spring. And that was great because people were walking by uh, and these are all ecologically conscious people. And they're talking about this. They're, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that, that, you know, composting was an option. This, and, and they, uh, some people had heard about aquamation and some people had heard about green barrel, but if we are available to answer questions, um, it creates this wonderful safe space where people can just ask anything they want and and not feel like it's taboo. Death is such a taboo topic. So we're really taking more of a kind of grassroots effort with this and trying to get people talking about this in really personal and, and conversational ways. 
And if I can get you to go back a little bit, I'm not familiar with sustainably, sustainably still water. Can you tell me what that is and what kind of certifications they gave you? Um, yeah, they also had a very extensive <laughs> certification process. It really did ask about every single part of your business. It's called uh, sustainable still water. And, oh. um, and they have a green business directory. And to get into the directory, it is a very extensive uh, questions about your business's, um, you know, electricity consumption and um, your your recycling and, and trash habits, the just everything about um, inclusivity and diversity and hiring. And and the, there is a it's a very long process, but uh, we got their their gold level certification um, because of the, the the actions that we've taken to to walk the talk. That is very impressive. And there's no easy way to ask this. Do you guys have your own on-site crematory or do you outsource that? We don't. We don't. Um, we we have very good trusted partners that we use for um, uh, flame cremation that we've used for a long time out. Uh, it's it's we have to drive by other crematories to get to the one that we do because we go to one that's that's operated by a licensed funeral director. And then our um, our alkaline hydrolysis is out of a, an organization in Chanhassen. And has that um, the alkaline hydrolysis specifically, has, is that something that that is getting more traction as well? Uh, we've we've heard about a, a lot about green burial. The alkaline hydrolysis seems to get like a big bump when it gets legalized in a state, but then you hear less and less about it as they go forward. Yeah, we well, Minnesota was the first state to legalize it because it was um, it was Mayo Clinic's um, disposition choice mm. for their body bequest program. So because of the very venerated Mayo Clinic, um, it got it, it had so much science and so much strong reputation behind it that the legislation went through, I believe it was in 2003. Um, so it's been legal here longer than anywhere in the United States. And um, I, we have a few providers in the metro area, um, but it's not something that's on the tip of everybody's tongue. Like when they think about cremation, they're not really talking about um, alkaline hydrolysis versus flame cremation. And it's something that's part of that education process because we've just got to, we've got to create awareness because this topic is not something people want to talk about generally. You know, mm. when you talk about, uh, you know, disposition options. It's not, it's not what people are talking about at the bars on a Friday night usually. So anytime we get some, some, um, exposure or, uh, you know, a nationwide, um, a nationwide news outlet picks it up, then uh, more discussion happens. And that's usually how people find it is because of, uh, a, a news article or, uh, something they heard on the radio. And so you're, Continuing education is a big part of the of the of the new business. There's you you're going to these conferences, and one of the things that we discussed and for the story, and there's no no need pretending we didn't, was you went to an NOR conference kind yeah. of out of the blue in Colorado. Can you tell me about going to that conference? The first ever body composting conference is what it was called. And it was put on by the Natural Funeral, which is a funeral home in in Colorado. And they organized this. And it was very, I mean, like, it was a first time effort in, the, in that it was great. It was, everybody was there. It was well planned. It was well organized. But like the tickets you purchased were through Eventbrite. It was very just kind of, you know, you could tell that this was a first go. But I was, we were really excited to be there. And um, I, I went to that, it was at, back in March and it was a lot of people from Colorado, but they had some really big names coming from Washington. They had um, um, Caitlin and Katrina and, um, and the, um, the, the professor who really worked on most of the, the, science behind what Katrina's doing in, in Washington at Recompose. And so it was uh, Dr. I think it's Boggs Carpenter, Carpenter Boggs. And right, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's Lynn Carpenter Boggs. I, yeah. I had to look her up because my daughter, my daughter works in at WSU with, oh. uh, not literally with her, but in the same, I mean, it's a huge agriculture school, but yes. I, 
I thought it was interesting that, yeah, no, she's at WSU and uh, still doing very well there. So Yeah. And so she was probably the most compelling person to hear from because um, she really got into the science of this. And when I went there, I was like, okay, do they, what do they do? Cause I, everyone kind of th- thinks the same thing that like something is put in with the body to create uh, the, the human composting or the natural organic reduction. But we found out that, no, that's not it at all. It's, it's uh, the, the line I use when I explain this to people is your body has been waiting your whole life to, <laughs> to uh, disintegrate you, but your body has been, your systems have been keeping it in check. So it's just bacteria in your gut, bacteria in your skin that does, and, and it does the heavy lifting. And it was so fascinating to hear from her because she was talking about how in agriculture, we've been doing composting for I mean, decades, hundreds of years uh, where it's, uh, well, using that science to create um, the, the rapid disintegration of soft tissue for large animals. So we, as humans kind of have a hard time struggling, you know, and struggle Mm -hmm. to think of ourselves as animals, but really at the end of the day, that's what we are. So um, she was uh, the person also to add uh, some credence to what she's, she's talking about and, and, and some, to her reputation, she was when the avian flu just happened. She was the person who was charged with ha- ha- having to safely um, dispose of like six million chickens. So Jeez. that is a huge composting process, and and it was a way to mitigate disease, and it was a way to to safely um, have these these birds and this tissue, you know, disintegrate. Um, and go back into the earth and create, um, you know, something that's non harmful. And you came home uh, uh, full of with a head full of information. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah. And did you did you have a plan to start implementing this as soon as you got back, or did you not have time to make a plan? Yes. So um, it was the. So this is where the strange twist of fate comes in because I got back from this, this conference. I want to say it was on a Friday or Saturday that I came back. And then that Monday I, I met with staff and, and the whole team got together and I said, okay, here's what's going on. And one of the big takeaways from um, being at the conference was I got to meet providers. So people who are actually doing this in Washington state, in Colorado. And uh, I really created a connection with the people from return home in Washington. Um, They have their, their kind of philosophy is very similar to ours that they have, you know, a small company kind of feel about them. Their, their heart just seems in the right place. I got to talk to not only the owner of the business, but a, a couple of their service providers there. And, and I would just really connected. And we talked about how they had um, already served, I think it was 18 states where people had been shipped from a different state where uh, natural organic reduction is not legal into Washington where it is legal. So I was like, oh, oh, we've got it. We will do this. And so I connected with them and we we talked about logistics and everything. And they were they were just wonderful to to talk with and to work with. So I came back ready to go, and and I talked to um, the 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 team on Monday, and I said, "Here's what we can do. We got to add this to the GPL. We've got to, you know, we can we can provide this. This is a ship out. So it's, you know, we talked about all the logistics of it, and I talked about the science of NOR, and everybody." was so enthusiastic about this, like, oh, this is really cool. And, and the idea of just naturally returning to the earth and, and really doing the thing that, that nature would do. This is, this is what, what being a part of the earth is about is just this natural return to the earth. And so I had it all kind of lined up and we talked about it. Everyone's excited. And then it was, I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday, but it was Almost immediately after, uh, the the phrase we use is two days later, um, Steve Wheeler called us. And Steve was someone who had been given a terminal diagnosis, was seeking green burial, was having a hard time finding 
a funeral home even able to provide a genuinely green burial. And he just sort of offhandedly said, well, what I really want is composting. And Mandy, who was meeting with him, said, we can do that. He was like, what? What? And he, he knew that it wasn't legal in our state. And I'm like, it's not doing anything illegal. It's definitely within the, like the regulations and the law and everything. But we can make that happen for you. And he was so excited. And and it was just the coolest thing that we had just had this conversation. If he had called on Friday, we would have said, no, that's not legal here. But <laughs> well, he, thankfully, he called on Tuesday or Wednesday because the conversation had happened. And that's, you know, that's rapid implementation and change like just just do the thing it instead of talking about the thing doing the thing because now we get to provide a meaningful death for somebody who otherwise wouldn't have gotten it that's the impact we have in this profession and and just being able being flexible and being open to things and saying saying yes until you have to say no is is really about serving people and giving them what they want and um, you did, and there'll be a link in the show notes. You, you made a you made a video with Stephen. Um, can you tell me about that process? Because that um, it's 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 a it's a moving video, but I think it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Yeah, yeah. So I sat down. Uh, so one thing about Steve is that he is he is a a teacher of history. He was literally a history teacher, and so he understands how things change and and he understands the impact of action and and he is a very charismatic and interesting person to talk to and when we were talking about this we were bringing up you know well it's not legal here but there is legislation currently in our house and senate so in the state of minnesota you have to have it's very much like our our united states senate where we have companion bills in the house and senate and they have to be approved and signed off by the governor um and those got introduced in 2023, but we had a very busy legislative session in 23. So we we're hopeful that uh, in the 24 session, when the bills carry over, that there's a chance they would get approved. And I, so with that sort of in mind, we said, hey, you know, Steve, I know that, that this is private and intimate time for you and your family, but would you be willing to talk about this um, so we can really put a face uh, to the impact that... Uh, natural or organic reduction is having for you and what impact it would be if we could legalize it in the state of Minnesota. And he was so on board. He was like, yes, I, I, I get the feeling. And from what he said, the more impact he can create from his death, the more meaning it creates for him. Right. And it's, it's such a huge gift to be able to give to him to say, you know, no matter what happens in the next few months, we're going to carry this torch. And because you sat down and you talked about this and you told your personal story, we're hopeful that's going to make a difference. And it would be hard for it not to make a difference having, having seen the video. And again, I encourage everybody to go to the show notes and, yeah. uh, and, and check it out. And that kind of brings us to the end of our time. Is there something that you wanted to say that I didn't give you a chance to say a question I should have asked and didn't? Um, not really. I just, I want, I, I want people to, to, if anything else, keep an open mind about this. Um, there's a lot of concern about gatekeeping of funeral professionals and, and not, and saying, you know, we, we, we were gatekeeping on, on burial for so long and trying to reject cremation. And, and this is such a great opportunity to take an, a profession and an, and an industry that people have had a, a, a bad idea about. They, we've been <laughs> represented poorly a lot. And, and every time, not every time, but many times when there's a news story, it's something negative. And this is a way to really not shy away from a positive progress in this profession. And, and thinking about genuinely not just stamping a green green label on something but really understanding the impact that funeral services have and and trying to get ourselves to be a more sustainable profession and industry because it's not just the burial of a uh, embalming fluid and a 
a vault and a casket. It's about the production of those. It's about the carbon impact of shipping and moving a 2000 pound vault and all of the other things that go into that, that use resources. And, and this is such a great and positive way to talk to people about death and to be, to be, let, let them be involved and let them have an intimate experience with loss because it really is just returning to the earth. And that is such a beautiful thing. And these have been some of the most beautiful and intimate ceremonies that I've ever seen. Like from the article, when I told you the the gentleman who had a tree fall in his yard the day he died and they put branches from that tree in with his casket. And it's just, there's so, there's such a different feeling when it's, when people choose a natural burial and, and, and are there and in contact with their decedent instead of, instead of creating this separation when their person is there and they're with them, there is a caring, there is love there and, and it carries over into death and it's a really beautiful thing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with uh, getting NOR passed in the next couple of years in uh, Minnesota. Yes. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you talking with me today. Funeral Service Insider, the podcast, is a Kate Boylston production. It was written and edited by me, Tony Russo. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. Make sure you check out the show notes. That's where the links to everything we've mentioned, including any of the ad stuff, can be found. Um, if you want to get in on the conversation, you can call me and leave a message. It is 732-746-0201. Or you can record a voice memo and email it to me. And my email address is arusso, R-U-S-S-O, at kbpublications.com. That's K like kitten, B like boy, publications.com. And you can also just tell me how you like the show or, you know, give me some uh, constructive criticism. I'm never afraid of that. I always say subscribe where you're listening now, and please do. But if you're listening on your computer, you may want to also subscribe on your phone so you can have Funeral Service Insider, the podcast, on the go. You can subscribe to us on Apple and Spotify and pretty much Amazon, pretty much anywhere you get podcasts. No, anywhere you get podcasts, you can totally subscribe to us. For this week's postmortem, I want to talk about Star Trek. Specifically, I want to talk about the good work that they're doing at Prey Funeral Home and Joe E. Prey, the fourth generation funeral director there. In the August issue of American Funeral Director, we have a feature on him and on a funeral that he did for a man who died at 36 years old who was a Star Trek fan. He always goes above and beyond. And in this case, Joe and the rest of his staff dressed up like Star Trek characters um, in the, you know, in the uniforms, the red and the gold. And they made sure that they had communicators for the people. And it's worth mentioning here that he and the rest of the staff at Prey Funeral Home regularly win the Keeping It Personal Award from the International Cemetery Cremation and Funeral Association. They've won it five times. This is something that they do. And I think he probably says, I'm sure he says in the story that it's it's nice and it's, it's, it's an honor to win the award, but that's not why he does it. He does it because he wants people to have the funeral that they want. And I don't know why I feel like I have to harp on this all of a sudden, but I really like highlighting people who give families the funeral that they need. They talk to them and they find out what they need that they don't know they can get. And then they offer it to them. And then it makes the funeral experience better. I mean, given that you have to go to a funeral, you may as well be surrounded by people who are committed to your grief process and to making it as authentic as it can be. Um, I just think it was a great story to go along with um, with Taylor and with all that she's doing over there in Minnesota. So check out American Funeral Director. Of course, there's tons of good stuff in there this month and every month. And um, that'll do it for this episode. So until next time, this is Tony Russo for Funeral Service Insider, the podcast. 